I've had this dream before, someplace, some time ago. As if this day was written into my destiny. Today I'll stand in court as a lawyer. To prove a killer innocent. Hello guys, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we finished up our investigation, and we're moving on into the final court day of the entire game. This is going to be awesome. It's such a cool thing there, where they open up with the same nightmare that Phoenix had at the very beginning of the game. It's so awesome. Anyways, in this episode, we're just going to jump into this and... Fight with all we can. If you'll remember the ultimatum that we were given, we have to try and prove that Madengard is innocent even though he isn't. So we can either side with the truth and get Madengard declared guilty but have Maya die, or side with Madengard and uh, let Maya live but let an innocent man walk free and get someone else who is probably innocent to declared completely guilty. It's a tough situation Phoenix has put has been put in, so without further ado, let's hop right into this. Hello, this is Phoenix Wright. You don't look so well, dude. You're gonna prove me not guilty today, right? <laughs> if you please, Mr. Lawyer. Remember, it's not just me. Your precious little friend's life is riding on today's verdict, too. Ugh. Now listen up. You'd better get unguard a guilty sentence, okay? If you get that creepy slime bag and not guilty, I'll never forgive you. Ever. Maya. Phoenix. Phoenix. M Mia. Maya. How's Maya? I don't know. You don't know? She hasn't tried to channel me since yesterday. Mia, wh what am I supposed to do? Well, like I said, for a lawyer, the worst times are when you have to force your biggest smiles. B but you can't give up. There's still some hope left. Stop it, please! There's nothing left. Not here, not anywhere. Ah, it's that accursed unguard again. Will you leave me alone? Look, don't call me anymore. I mean it. You're really mean, pal. Uh, Gumshoe, I I'm really, really sorry. Where are you? They let me join the investigation team and were chasing after the killer, pal. Then, you have some sort of lead? Sorry, but right now we've got zero leads on this guy. But we're gonna give- but we're not gonna give up. Gumshoe. Until the trial is over, until the verdict is handed down, we're going to do everything we can and find the killer. If we can get Maya out, then you can visit. If we get Maya out, then you can get on God the guilty verdict he deserves, pal. That's true. I could do that if they found Maya first. You got that? So you have to do whatever you can to make the trial last longer. I have to make the trial last longer? If you go at Mr. Edgeworth with everything you've got, then you, you two can draw it out. Oh, now I get it. I believe in you, pal. You and Mr. Edgeworth can do it. So, believe in us. We're gonna give it all we've got, just like you. Got it. Thanks, Gumshoe. Hey, Phoenix. You understand now, don't you? You have something money will never be able to buy. Friendship. It's the strongest weapon in the world, and you have it in abundance. Y yeah Looks like we're coming to the end. I have to make the trial last as long as I can. Gumshoe will come through. I know it! Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Ungard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Now, as I recall, we concluded yesterday's session with a big mystery on our hands. The mystery being what exactly was Miss Adrian Andrews' role in this murder. That is to say, she really is she really connected to the crime itself. 
Mr. Edgeworth, if you would please inform the court of today's proceedings. Adrian Andrews. She forged evidence that threw suspicion onto Mr. Ungard. And then proceeded to escape the crime scene by wearing a nickel samurai costume. The guilt of these actions are those from which we can she cannot escape. Hmm, then you're saying that she is guilty after all? I'm not finished, Your Honor. Miss, An Miss Andrews has nothing to do with the committing the actual murder. I would like to direct the court's attention to this card. What is that? It looks like a shell. This is the calling card of a certain assassin. A assassin, you say? <clears throat> yes, Juan Correa was killed by a professional assassin. And the person who hired this assassin, his client so to speak, is Matt on guard. What a surprising turn of events! I would think it's become commonplace by now, Your Honor. I know what's going on this time, so I know that everything Edgeworth has, has said is true. But we still have to hold out as long as we can, at least until Maya's safe and sound. I wonder how the trial will turn out today. Now then, please call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls the defendant's mentor, Mr. Will Powers, to the stand. Now then, witness, your name and occupation, please. Okay, I'm, uh, Will Powers. I'm a poor underpaid action star. And what is your relation to the defendant? Well, that's, I guess I'm sort of a lousy mentor to him in a way. Yeah. Um, Mr. Powers, please, you don't need to put yourself down so much. Oh, uh, sorry. Well, but I'm just kind of a nothing sort of guy. On the night of the murder, you visited the defendant's room. Is this correct? I don't know why I did that. Yes. I, I didn't know that. Um, but you know, I didn't actually get to see Matt when I went. All you need to do is answer what you're asked. Now then, I would like you to please testify about when you went to Mr. Ungard's room. Uh, okay, sure. After the award ceremony, I went by myself to Matt's room. Matt was standing there in front of his, his room, still in his nickel samurai costume. He was talking with someone. At first I thought it was the bellboy. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I had guests with me that night, and I couldn't make them wait for me. Hmm, nothing sounds out of place in Mr. Powers' testimony. And talking with a bellboy is no big deal. If one assumes that the person Mr. Ungard was speaking with was an ordinary bellboy, what are you implying? Well, Mr. Wright, let's have your cross-examination, shall we? Looks like we're in another sticky situation. Huh? A trap. Can't you smell it, Phoenix? But for us to find out more, we're just going to have to charge in head first, right? So, interesting thing, the solution for this one is pretty weird, we're still going to be pressing around, but this uh, cross-examination is infamous in my mind for having a very weird solution, and I don't think this is the last time they do this too, I'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to it. The defendant's room. Why did you go there? Well, I'm his mentor, like a big brother sort of, and I wanted to say congrats. What's wrong? Why did you stop? M Mr. Wright! What is it? You... You're going to try to trick me into a corner, aren't you? Huh? I... I know I'm just a poor underpaid action star, but... But I... I'm not the killer! Um... No one said you were, Mr. Powers. No, please! Don't trick me! Every time you do your lawyer thing, the witness suddenly turns into the bad guy. Every time? Witness, I will personally talk to the defense at a later time, so for now, please kindly co cooperate and continue with your testimony. Sorry. So, you went to the defendant's room, and then... Hey, wait a minute. When and how did I suddenly turn into the bad guy here? 
Matt was standing there in front of his room, still in his Nickel Samurai costume. Are you sure that it was Matt on guard? Yeah, I'm sure. He wasn't wearing the Nickel Samurai mask then. If that's the case, then you really can't be mistaken. And, what was the, de what was the defendant doing standing in front of his own room? I'm sort of uh, finalizing Edgeworth's voice here because I'm not very good at doing accents, especially British accents. So I've kind of been struggling on like how specifically to do Edgeworth's voice. But I think I'm sort of coming to a conclusion here on how I'm supposed to do it. Who's was talking with some of the first? I thought it was the bellboy. At first? What do you mean by that? Well, he was in a bellboyish uniform and had a bottle of juice on a tray. Sounds like an ordinary bellboy to me. Um, yeah, but... I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? Uh, how am I supposed to know? Sorry, but I can't remember right now. Sorry. I guess I'm going to have to wait patiently on this one. Two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. I just realized you could see me spamming the L button there when I was trying to press him. You saw the two of them, the bellboy and the defendant, together, correct? Yeah, the bellboy just wanted to say congrats. Now, while you were watching the two of them, did you notice anything strange? Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. A tip? But that's perfectly normal, th uh, but, th but that's a perfectly normal thing to do. So how long did you watch the two of them? Uh, not more than a minute or two, I think. I guess it was my dad and I couldn't make them, them wait for me. So who are these guests you're talking about? You guys, of course. You and Maya and Lil Pearl. I thought it would be really rude since I invited you guys if I disappeared on you. So I went back to my seat pretty soon after seeing Matt in the hallway. <sighs> For some reason, doing uh, Will Powers' voice makes me want to yawn. This is like squeezing water from a stone. It's probably pointless to press further. Do you remember this incident? Did Mr. Powers leave his seat that night? I don't remember that happening at all. Maya was making such a racket in her hyper state. I ended up focusing on her. I see. In any case, from his story, he probably wasn't gone for very long. Okay, so we're looping around back now. Here's the solution. It's very, very strange. The first thing you need to do is press the fourth statement. I watched the two of them for a while, but then I gave up and went back. The next thing you need to do is press the third statement after you've pressed the fourth statement. Which is very strange, because if you're going through this, you're probably just going to press all of the statements in order if you do any pressing at all. So it's weird to have something like this out of order, where you're supposed to remember what was being talked about. Because this is the first time this has happened in the series. It's, I don't know, it's weird. At first, what do you mean by that? And we're getting some of the same dialogue here too. I didn't think he was a normal bellboy. And why was that? Um, why did I think that, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Hey, wait a second. Actually, Mr. Powers, only a few minutes ago you stated... Um, you know, I did feel something weird. I think it was because Matt, well, he gave the bellboy a tip. Could it be that you felt something strange about the tip-giving incident itself? Oh, yeah, that's it. You really know your job. Hmm, Mr. Redworth. Yes, Your Honor. This bellboy. He wasn't an ordinary one, was he? Perhaps we should let the witness tell us. Very well. Mr. Powers, please amend your testimony. You mean about the bellboy, right? Matt gave the bellboy a tip. Now you need to press this statement. So I gave the bellboy a tip. What's so strange about that? Oh, uh, well, you see, Matt's not a poor penny pincher like me. I was trying to figure out how much it was because the tip really shocked me. How much it was? But that's when something even more surprising happened. The bellboy was putting the tip he got in his pocket. 
and that's when I got my first good look at the guy's face. I was really shocked. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't follow at all. Sounds like Mr. Powers was surprised twice by this event. I wonder which of his shocking moments I should ask about. Let's ask about the tip. Don't take that out of context. The defendant is a huge star. He can afford to give generous tips, wouldn't you agree? Um, sure. But giving him that much was maybe a little too much, I think. A little too much. Would you please clarify for the court? About how much would you say the defendant gave the bellboy? Honestly, I don't know. I can't even begin to guess. And why is that? Because he gave the bellboy a really, really fat roll of cash. A roll of cash?! Ah, well, how interesting. That certainly was a very generous tip, wasn't it? A very fat roll of cash. That can hardly be called a tip, Your Honor. Hmm. The judge is beginning to look awfully suspicious of us. Let's try to raise an objection. objection. The defendant is a superstar. That kind of tip is typical fare for people like him. Objection. Are you saying that superstars are super spenders? If I could receive a large rolls of cash by simply bringing people things on trays, then why on earth would I be standing here prosecuting? He's got a point. I don't even get paid, let alone rolls of cash for all my hard work. You don't get paid? Where do you... How do you afford the office and your apartment? Hmm, so supposing that roll of cash was not a tip, then what was it? Payment, Your Honor. Payment. Isn't it obvious? For the murder of one Corita. Then... Then the bellboy the witness saw. Yes, he was the assassin. Hold your horses now. Mr. Edgeworth, you don't have any proof of this, do you? Have I ever been unprepared to support my claims, Your Honor? I have here the card Shelley de Killer left at the scene of the crime. Shelley de Killer? He is the person the police's special investigations team has been chasing for ages. I am certain that the person the witness saw was this very assassin, Shelley de Killer. Uh, really? Huh? What's wrong, Mr. Powers? No, nothing. Something just clicked in my head and I think I just figured something out. Oh? Actually, I saw that bellboy again later on that night. What? Mr. Powers, please testify. Tell us what you saw. Y yes, sir. Right away. We're going to learn about the second time that Will Powers saw the killer in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!